okay so we have read the iterative equation right uh, in the last lecture and uh, in today's lecture we will be dealing with the gauss zeter algorithm okay so it is one of the commonly used uh, C, uh, algorithm for uh, the purpose of uh, uh, solving your load flow studies okay and i'll be uh, telling you about the algorithm how to get with respect to the uh, pq bus and pq bus you'll be seeing okay so the heading is load flow solution using using gauss zedel algorithm okay or you can say gauss zedel method generally they'll be calling this as a gs method okay so in this there are two types okay first you will be dealing with the handling of power system with pq bus alone with pq bus alone so pq bus in the sense it is your load bus so in this lecture we'll be dealing with this okay and uh, we have already seen there are three types of buses what happen if there is only a uh, pq bus uh, alone okay so surely there will be one uh, one slack bus okay one slack bus and others will be of your pq bus and you'll be getting into the algorithm the algorithm will be uh, what i'm going to take is uh, it will be uh, somewhat more theoretical manner when dealing with the problem it will be very easy for you to understand i'll be uh, deriving out the steps basic steps totally there are eight steps i'll be dealing with the eight steps i'll be uh, briefing out the eight steps so while dealing with the problem you can just stick on to the steps so it will be very much easier for you okay so let all so let uh, all the bus in the system or assume to be to be load bus so load bus in the sense only load is connected okay so that is your pq bus okay so as per uh, pq so the value of your p and q will be given will be given and you have to find you have to find voltage and del okay so this is the parameters we are going to find by the given problem they'll be giving p and q when with the help of p and q by using gauss zedel over the pq bus you have to find v and del okay so moving to the step 1 form the y bus of the network by bus inspection method so this is the thing what you have to initially do you have to form your y bus matrix method selecting selecting the ground selecting the ground as reference load okay so one of the load has to be taken as a reference so it is a load which is connected to the ground okay coming to step 2 so step 1 is entirely uh, of formation of your y bus so step 2 if the slack bus isn't specified okay if they didn't specify your slack bus then select one of the generator bus one of the generator bus that is 
it has to be of higher capacity it has to be of higher capacity as a slack bus as a slack bus okay and for this slack bus you have to take the voltage as the reference voltage that is uh, one per unit that is for the slack bus you are taking the voltage as the voltage as the reference hence hence your magnitude of the voltage okay your magnitude of the voltage tends to be 1.0 per unit and the voltage angle del will be zero so as you are taking uh, the particular uh, bus to be the particular bus to be what you can say uh, the reference you have to consider in this manner okay you have to consider in this manner so moving on step 3 initialize the bus voltage initialize the bus voltage so assume the initial value of voltage for all the buses except the slack bus so here what they are saying uh, they are asking you to assume the initial value so the initial value you have to assume it okay so initial value you have to assume it on your own and uh, except for that of the slack bus for slack bus the voltage is uh, we already taking it as a reference so except that one you have to uh, other things you have to consider uh, you have to assume for the initial condition okay so hence for all the buses vp your initial voltage is 1 so it will be 1 plus j 0, 0.0 per unit so yesterday in the iterative process we have seen uh, the present and the that is the past and the future values right so in that you have to first uh, primarily you have to consider to be the past value you have to consider to be as the one per unit for all the buses except your slack bus so So definition in iterative method of load flow. Bus also we are con uh, considering it as one per unit only, no, sir. Oh yes, man, yes, man. Uh, uh, but uh, what you can say is that uh, while getting inside the load flow, uh, that is uh, getting inside the iterative method, uh, this. Uh, initial values uh, get changes but for your slack bus your initial value won't change okay we are dealing with the problem will be understanding okay so in iterative method of load flow the initial voltage of all the buses of all the buses okay except the slack buses
assumed as 1 plus j 0 0.00 per unit. So this kind of uh, assumption is generally what they'll be calling it as they'll be calling it as a flat voltage profile. Okay. Uh, so it's a definition, you just uh, have it in mind. Uh, inside the steps, you don't need to write. Okay, so for the step oriented uh, thing, you have to know that uh, VP, you have to uh, first initialize to be 1 plus J 0, 0.0 per unit. Okay, and over here, uh, you can write this is referred to be flat voltage profile. Okay, as per step three, you have uh, considered the initial conditions of all the buses. So moving to the step four. At the step four, set the hydration count. Set the hydration count k equal to zero. Okay, k equal to zero. Then start the bus count start the bus count p equal to 1 okay then if the p what you are selecting if the p what you are selecting is a slack bus then increment the bus count hence p becomes 2 okay so this is what your step 4 so after getting into the step 4 you have to move towards your step 5 so step 5 is nothing but your iteration uh, uh, formula okay so step 5 Solve the voltage equation for bus number P as that voltage equation you had right EPK plus 1 will be equal to 1 by YPP into PP minus jqp divided by ep so here you have to consider to be the k okay minus summation q equal to 1 p minus 1 and then it will become uh, y p q sorry here you have to go in. p p you take so this becomes a v q k plus 1 and then minus summation q equal to p plus 1 to n y p q okay y p q e q k okay so this is what your step 5 so you got your uh, uh, iterate voltage equation okay so the perspective value you have to put this voltage equation after this the step 6 calculate the change in bus voltage that is del del vp equal to vp k plus 1 minus vp k okay so this is a uh, step 6 so in this step 6 
So this uh, VP del VP del VPK plus one minus uh, VPK. You, this equation you might have already gone through in your uh, numerical methods. So that is this is nothing but the error. This is nothing but the error. So this error has to be minimized. So this error has to be minimized. That is, it has to be coming under the 0 0.00 range. So if it's coming under that range, then your solution is converged. That is, you can stop your iterative method. Uh, you just recall your uh, numerical method. Uh, so in that, uh, this is the methodology that will be used. So here at the step six, there's a parameter called uh, acceleration of convergence, which is alpha. So the definition is the acceleration factor factor alpha, which makes the fast convergence is given us So this uh, acceleration convergence uh, formula is, it goes like this. So VP ACC, ACC refers to acceleration, okay? K plus one will be equal to VP K plus alpha. So, Sorry, VP, VP, K plus one minus VP into K. Okay, that is, uh, this is the formula with respect to the acceleration coefficient. Okay, so here alpha is there. And from this, what you can uh, infer is VP acceleration k plus 1 equal to vp k plus here this alpha so this thing you can replace with your del vp okay so it is replaced with your del vp and now you need the value of alpha okay you just have this in this side so alpha will be vp accelerator k plus minus vp K divided by del VP. Okay, so in the problems you'll be making use of this. Usually, your alpha value will be it is a ratio, so it, it takes the value between 1.3 to 1.7 to get the value uh, optimum value that is the best solution. So alpha you can consider to be 1.6. In some problems, uh, alpha you have to consider at that duration you have to consider alpha to be 1.6. If they didn't give in the problem, you have to consider it to be 1.6. Okay. So this is with your uh, step six. So moving to the step seven. Calculate the bus voltage for all PQ bus. except the slag bus. So with the equation what we have seen in the above, the voltage equation what we have seen above, uh, with that equation, you have to find the voltage for all other buses, okay, except your slag bus. Okay, um, so coming to the step eight, Repeat the iterative process repeat the iterative process that is increment the value of your 
increment the value of your k okay increment the uh, value of k okay until the del vp for all the buses are within a specified limit known as tolerance so this will be epsilon so it will be epsilon so usually your epsilon value will be 0 0.00 again a 0 1 0 0.001 and now when you have to stop the iteration process means iteration process can be stop when this vp k plus 1 that is your del vp okay vp k is the magnitude of this has to be very very less than your epsilon value that is your del vp has to be less than this epsilon at that uh, duration okay at that duration uh, your will be getting the uh, optimum load flow solution okay so that is uh, the pr problem ends at that duration because the error gets uh, limited uh, the from the future as well as your past case okay so here what you have to notice So note slack bus voltage is fixed throughout the iteration. Okay, that is <clears throat> even if you are making n number of iterations, okay, even if you are making n number of iterations, your slack bus value remains the same. That is, it is 1.0 per unit. Okay, so these are the steps with respect to your uh, uh, what you can say, uh, PQ bus. Totally eight steps are there. <clears throat> so in your uh, system, if there is only, particularly if there is only load means, that is if your system is like this. So if your system is like this, that is, uh, it consists of three buses, one, two, three, connected in this fashion, okay? And here you can see, Generator is uh, there. <clears throat> so this you can take it as a slack bus. First bus is taken as a slack bus. So in the other two buses, there is only load. There's only load. In such a case, in such a case, you can consider this to be the previous uh, uh, method. Using the previous method, what we have seen now, you can uh, find the load flow for this power system network okay because here there is only pq bus here there is only pq bus this entire system consists of only loads only loads are present in this entire power system network okay so next what you'll be seeing is that what happens if a if a 
generator is attached to the uh, network this kind of network what happens a generator g1 is attached to this bus then what happens this third bus becomes a pv bus it can inject the power into the power system network so this becomes a pv bus so in the next thing what we'll be seeing is what how your uh, power system uh, you can uh, find the load flow solution in a pv bus that we'll be dealing with Upon the value, we should be choosing slack bus whether G or G1 no, sir. Yeah, that is uh, based upon the rating. If the rating of uh, G is higher than G1, then you have to select G. Otherwise, if the rating of G1 is high, means you have to consider G1 as your slack bus. If this rating is higher, means you have to consider G1 as the slack bus. If G1 rating is higher, means you have to consider G1 as the slack bus. Okay. So we'll be moving to the next one. So it is basically next what you'll be seeing is you'll be uh, dealing with your uh, PV bus. Okay, so B handling of power system with PV bus. Okay, so over here. In your PV bus, what are the things you know? You know the value of P, comma V are known, and you have to find the value of Q and del. You have to find. Okay. So we'll be going to the step one. So here. You have to compute the reactive power QP using the equation QP equal to minus. Okay, we are speaking about reactive power. So here is minus imaginary part of imaginary part of this equation that is vp summation q equal to 1 n ypq eq okay so from this you can find your qp from this equation so we are considering only the imaginary part and hence you will be getting your reactive power okay if you are considering the real part means you will be getting the value of your real power okay so this is what with your uh, step one so moving to the step two after calculating after calculating the value of qp So this is uh, the at the voltage control bus. Voltage control bus means PV bus. So voltage control bus is nothing but your PV bus. 
So that is the previous case. Here you can see this is your PV bus. Okay, if you are considering this as a flag bus, means this is your PV bus. So for this, you have to find your reactive power. So after finding it, uh, what happens? Uh, next, what you have to do is it should be checked. It should be check with Q limit violation. So I'll be speaking about Q limit violation uh, when dealing the problem. Okay, you just have it in your mind. Okay, you just have it in your mind. That is the active power is generated within the limit. So what kind of with limit So in most of the cases, this limit will be given in the problem itself. Okay, otherwise uh, it is you who, you who have to assume it, okay? So based upon this, at the step two, there raises two cases. There raises two cases. So what happens is that, so case one is uh, first one is uh, that QP is within the limit okay otherwise qp violates the limit okay so we'll be getting into the case one if qp is within the limit So if QP is within the limit, then it indicates that with available reactive power generation it is possible to maintain the voltage magnitude at PV bus. So if QP is within the limit in the sense, what happens is that uh, it is possible to maintain your voltage uh, magnitude at the PV bus they are saying. So that is uh, your system will be in uh, stability condition and uh, the all the other uh, steps will be more or less same that of your PQ bus. Okay. So the steps what will be coming will be entirely of your PQ bus. Okay. So after this, then the phase angle del has to be calculated by the voltage equation, by solving the voltage equation. So how you can calculate uh, that I will be dealing when solving the problem. So now again, here you have to write your voltage equation. EP K plus one will be equal to one by YPP into, sorry here again, this VP. So it will be PP minus JQP divided by VP K 
okay minus summation q equal to 1 p minus 1 vq k plus 1 minus uh, so here on ypq will be there okay minus summation q equal to p plus 1 to n ypq eq k okay and here your QP value will be equal to minus imaginary VP summation Q equal to 1 to N YPQ VQ. Okay. So these are the steps what we have already seen in the previous case. The same steps are uh, repeating again. Okay, so here it is uh, very much clear and over here what you can see is uh, after this step what you have to do is you have to move towards your acceleration of convergence. Okay, so here the acceleration of uh, convergence uh, remains the same as the previous case. So acceleration of convergence alpha will be equal to EP acceleration k plus 1 equal to sorry again okay, this pp vp okay so it is vp k plus alpha vp k plus 1 minus vp k okay so over here vp is acceleration k plus 1 you can write it as vp k plus alpha del vp okay and over here from this you can compute the value of uh, your load angle del okay and uh, this is the end of your uh, case one okay uh, leading the problem, uh, I'll be separately see, saying about uh, case one, case two, and other things. Okay, so this is with your case one. So next is case two. Next is uh, case two. So in your case two, QP gets violated if QP lies outside of the Q limit. then it indicates that the voltage level at that bus cannot be maintained at the specified value okay so the pv bus is will be considered as a as a load bus so it is this q limit which uh, classifies the pv bus to be either it is a pv bus or it, it might sometimes it might be a pq bus because a generator if you are uh, reversing its uh, slip speed okay in a synchronous generator means that synchronous generator basically operates to be a motor then what happens 
at that bus that machine becomes a load so for that purpose only we are having a q limit check okay with the known quantities of p and q okay so again the unknown quantity of so if it becomes a pq means what happens you don't know the v and del okay these two are not known so on the unknown quantity of v and del can be obtained by solving the voltage equation so over here this qp mean to be less than equal to qp to be less than equal to qp so as i said this will be given this is your q limit and uh, this is this value you have to compute and uh, these two value will be specified okay and over here with respect to your q limit if the computed value if the computed value of qp which violates the qp min that is the minimum value then that is and the violation you have to consider your qp right so over here you, you might be confused to which you have to take it as a qp either a q value either you have to consider your qp min or qp max so your qp will be that is your reactive power will be equal to minimum value of your qp other hand so which value it gets violated that value you have to consider to be your uh, reactive power If it violates the QP max range means then QP equal to QP max. So this procedure you have to repeat for every iteration. Every iteration process you have to repeat. Okay, so this is with your respect to your uh, algorithm. And uh, in tomorrow's class, uh, we'll be dealing with your uh, problems. Problems oriented to this. Okay, we'll be dealing with the problems. So I hope uh, you might got started.